What do you mean, a test? Leonard Carver questioned, his voice unsure as he looked at the tall and tan-skinned man in front of him. A test, the man said simply, to make you a member of my tribe. I think there has been a misunderstanding, Jeral, Leonard said. His hands raised as if trying to stop the conversation from going in a direction he felt would end poorly. The heads of my temple paid your chieftain to give me a guide. A guide, too, as the title implies. Guide me, as I observe a beast man heard. There was nothing about a test. Duval looked curiously at Leonard for a moment before slowly shaking his head, as if finally understanding something. Ah, I see. There has been a miscommunication. We told your leaders that if one of us is going to be your guide, you will have to become part of our tribe. They accepted. Why they did not inform you of this, I do not know. The look of amusement on Javal's face made Leonard wonder if he was being fooled with. Although he wanted to call Javal a liar, he knew he had no way to prove it. He also knew there was no one else he could rely on in these woods to guide him safely. Lowering his head, he accepted his fate. What do I need to do? He said dejectedly, his shoulders slumped. Do not worry, Leonard, Javal said through a smile, his hand resting reassuringly on Leonard's shoulder. Trust me when I say it's more of a formality. Tradition and all that. It will be a simple test, something we give to our children. Now, let us begin walking, and as we do, I will explain about the beasts we will follow. At least, I will give you enough knowledge to not get killed doing something stupid, eh? First, I will speak of the core of the beasts we will follow. The ones called the Beastmen. Now the Beastmen can be split into two tribes, the Bray Herds and the War Herds. To understand the dangers of the Beastmen, you must understand both of these tribes. For the Bray Herds symbolize the animal cunning of the Beastmen, while the War Herds represent the bestial savagery. And if you're not ready for both, your life will end poorly and violently. The most manlike of the Beastmen, and the most cunning, are the Bray Herds. They are the most numerous of the beastmen and come in various breeds. The weakest and most abused of the beastmen are the Ungors. They are cursed, at least in the eyes of the beastmen, with being the most man-shaped. Because of this, they are tormented relentlessly, killed by larger beastmen when the mood strikes them and forced to scavenge for scraps to survive. But this doesn't make them any less dangerous, for they are quicker and more dexterous than their bigger kin, and their abuse has made them spiteful little creatures going to great lengths to give the same abuse they receive to their enemies. With their gnarled short spears, ungore blades, and crude half-shields, they charge at other races in large hordes. Led by a half-horn, they scream in baying hatred at the mortal races they are most cursed resemble. A few of the ungors use their dexterity to their advantage, becoming ungor raiders. Their bows either used to ambush unwary travelers, or unleash a storm of arrows on those they deem worthy of their petty rage. The most common of the beastmen are the Gores. Taller and stronger than most humans, they charge into battle led by an alpha gore called a full render. When they get close, they rend and tear with their gore blades and revel in the anarchy and mayhem they unleash on all they face. The biggest and strongest of the Gores are known as Bestigors. To them goes the biggest portion of the spoils and the best positions in the Horde whether as bodyguards for beast lords and shamans, or in the forefront of battle against the toughest and most hated foes. Wielding their despoiler axes and led by their gorge horns, they have a special hatred for the forces of order, overcome with an instinct to despoil anything those armies have built, crushing it to ruin in a bestial rage. Centigors are beastmen with the lower body of a horse which grants them great speed, and a large upper body which grants them superior power. They are also dumb as a rock and usually drunk, but don't let that make you think you can use that as a weakness. When they charge at you with their spears in a drunken revelry, and trample you with their clawed forelimbs, you'll know you had underestimated them. Beastmen as a whole aren't much for building. Spears are one thing, but something like a chariot is usually beyond them. However, on occasion, whether it's a vision from the dark gods or just a bump on the head, the Bessigor is overcome with the vision of a chariot in his mind. Guided by this vision, it gets some Ungors to get to work, 
forcing them to use their dexterous hands to construct the vehicle. While they are doing that, he hunts down some tusk gores, temperamental beasts that, if the Bessagor survives capturing them, becomes powerful and swift mounts. Once the tusk gore chariot is done, the Bestigor used the same chariot to run down the Ungors who had built it, to both test the effectiveness of the chariot and to have a good laugh. The Great Bray Shaman is the spiritual leader of the Beastmen, continuously reading entrails and seeing other portents to determine when and where to strike the enemy in the name of ruin. Their very presence can corrupt reality around it, and they can focus chaotic energies through their fetish staffs to cast magic and even devolve the minds of their foes into a more bestial state. The Beast Lord is the most powerful and cunning of the Gores. Turning the herd of beasts into a trained pack of animals unleashed on an unwary foe. Born as a simple Gore, it rides bloodily through the ranks, gaining victories and crushing rivals until it sees itself as powerful enough to challenge the head of its beast herd. If victorious, the Gore takes its place as head of the herd, at least until another Gore decides to challenge it. In the battlefield, it wields paired Man Ripper axes with rapid speed, and it loves nothing more than ripping off the heads of enemy heroes and displaying their grisly trophies up for all to see. I will be honest, Professor. I do not have much experience with the Zangor breed of beastmen. Their type tends not to visit my little portion of the realms. What I have heard is that their god makes them dangerous foes. Perhaps you should speak with those who have more experience concerning the servants and disciples of Zinch. I will uh, make a note. Good. Now the war herds. There is a legend that in the distant days before the Age of Myth, there was a tribe of Bray herds so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic that the Chaos Gods decided to bless them, gifting them with an insatiable blood greed that even puts the followers of Korn to shame. Whether that is true or not, I have no idea. But there is no denying that the war herds are composed of the biggest and most bestial of the beast men. Most of them curse with the hunger for the flesh and blood of their foes so strong it drives them to madness. The bull gores are the most numerous of the war herds, and easily one of the strongest breed of beastmen in the army. Wielding either dual axes or great axes, and their horns, their blood greed urges them to savage and consume their enemies in torrents of blood and gore. Rising from the ranks of the bull gores are the doom bulls, a dominating force in the battlefield that slaughters enemies with impunity, killing all with its horns and slaughterer's axe. Like its bull gore kin, it has with it an insatiable blood greed that pushes it to hunt the biggest foes and consume it to gain its strength. When close to an enemy, it roars at other beastmen of the war herd in a slaughterer's call to rip and tear. With such a powerful beast, you would think that it would naturally fight for leadership of the herds, but while they have the strength, they don't have much of a head for planning. A beast lord generally has to point in the direction of a target, and the doom bull is more than happy to destroy anything in its way. When a blood greed overtakes a tribe of bull gores, it is said that they attack themselves. Bull gores of the tribe consuming their kin with the same zeal as they would an enemy. By the end of the cannibalistic feast, only one bull gore remains, becoming a gorgon, the flesh of its kin causing it to grow monstrous in size. It gains two new arms ending in vicious blades, and a huge slavering maw that swallows people whole. And like the bull gores and doom bulls before it, it is ever controlled by its blood greed. If you see one of these things before you, pray to your god it kills you before it eats you. Unlike the other three previously discussed members of the war herd, the Saigor hungers not for flesh, but for magic. Their ancestors' conception of the flesh of wizards, magicians, and shamans turning them into giant one-eyed monsters. Monsters whose only wish is to find and consume magic, whether that be an unfortunate mage or a random spell. They are aided by their blind but magically sensitive eye, allowing it to see the souls of mages it can consume or the ruins of magically enriched structures it can throw. As they came close to cresting a hill, Jeral motioned Leonard to stop and pushed a large knife into his hands. What's this for? Leonard asked, worry obvious in his voice. It's just part of the ritual, my friend, Jeral said reassuringly. Now walk up to the top of that hill and tell me what you see. Slowly, Leonard finished cresting the hill. Far down on the other side, he saw a lone beastman covered in blood, 
An ungore if Javal's description was accurate. The beast man was arms deep in a recent kill, an unfortunate deer that the creature was stuffing bits of into its mouth. Before Leonard could think of what to do next, he heard a large calling far behind him. Turning around, he saw nothing but a few trees and knee-high grass. The guy Javal nowhere to be seen. What he heard next was the baying of a mad goat. Turning back, he saw the lone Ungor charging up the hill, its bloody hands ready to rip him apart and make him its next meal. Frozen in terror, Leonard clutched his knife in a vice grip, deciding that if he survived, he would never leave his home ever again. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about the war herds and bray herds of the Beast of Chaos. If you like it, please like, subscribe, comment, press the little bell, and if you really like it, please consider giving to my Patreon. The extra money gives the time I need to work on these stories I love. Anyway, thanks for listening, and see you next time.